Welcome back to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth. As you can see, we're almost done with the second floor of the Evil Spirit Club. Last time we encountered the Jump Scare FOEs as well, but this time we have a little bit of unfinished business in the Creaking Floorboards area, which is what the side quest we'll be doing pertains to. As you can see, that green arrow there for a shortcut pretty much shows where we'll be going. And then we'll be exploring the rest of this area and getting a chest that we uh, missed over there last time. Firstly though, let's accept the quest from the nurse's office. There is one more quest for this floor, but I might as well do that in the next part, which will probably be a uh, purely a side quest episode, because a few things unlock after getting to the Evil Spirit Club third floor. So here we are, obtain a hellish pacifier. Now this one's actually kind of interesting. Are you sure you would Well, mainly to me because Because the thing that babies suck on not actually called pacifiers in British and Australian English. We call them dummies. D-U-M-M-Y. So yeah, that Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, The Pacifier, the title didn't really make that much sense to me when I first saw it. Like, no, I haven't seen the movie, but I just, I've seen the, the title of the movie on a, in a video store. Anyway, uh, yeah. We need to go to the music room within the second story of the Evil Spirit Club. There is an item called a Hellish Pacifier. This quest will have a time limit. And I now know that the time limit is very, very generous, so I'm totally fine with that. Anyway, I don't think there's really much new that I can make at the Velvet Room. No, I can check, but there probably isn't. Gary Sue is still level 31. Oh, I can actually try and get you for real. Because I got an accident the last time I tried to fuse you. But you were made out of three personas that I don't actually need, so might as well. I doubt I'll actually be using this, um... I suppose I can pass down Null Poison to some things for the future. Yeah, I doubt I'll actually be using this persona much. Aside from fusion fodder or maybe a sacrifice. Okay, everything can be passed down to you, I guess, because full personas are good at inheriting just about any skill. Except you have tons of skills that I'd like to pass down, and uh, you've got a few more skills that you're going to be learning eventually. Fire boost will help against the enemies in this area. Is there something that I can sacrifice spread to get you that skill? Haven't really been using uh, Mithra that much. You know what? Let us sacrifice to power up our waffle. At this point you'll probably be seeing a lot of sacrificing because it's really the best way to level up the high level personas of this game. I haven't registered a lot of things to the compendium lately. While you're here, have this lucky accident persona. And now I'm going to set up my party for this. Okay, so this spear is a little weaker, but it does give agility bind, that's nice. I'm almost finished my preparations anyway, so I guess I can cut in here. Yeah, this looks pretty good. And for sub personas, I haven't really changed all that much. I've just given Shinjiro, Orthrus. Ken now has Red Rider, even though he probably won't be doing much with it. I've given Yukiko Yu because I would like Impure Reach on Naoto, but Yukiko already has Meragi, so I kind of want Meragi on two people here, and Fuka's gonna abstain because I'd like for her to learn Prayer, which is insanely good, especially for the boss of this labyrinth. So, time to head out. Okay, so weird thing, I'm actually re-recording this because I messed up the map in the last part, and that actually rendered this puzzle a lot harder than it was supposed to be, so yeah, I'm an idiot. Basically, I got some of the locations of the creaking floor tiles wrong. That one is not there. And that one is one space further forward than I had it marked as. So that should hopefully make things easier. We can now access both doors without stepping on a creaking tile. So now let's head into the labyrinth.
You know what, while I'm here I want to test something. This is actually pointed out in comments and I completely didn't realise this, but... That's... That's really... I can't believe I've played this game at least three times now and I never noticed this. You don't get encounters in dark rooms. Yeah, the meter's not going up at all. That's... Wow, that's really weird actually. I never noticed that. Light over there. Is that a power spot? There's a switch. Shall we investigate? And yeah, the lights are now uh, off again, so we have to turn the switch back on. Now there are lights in this room, though. Okay, we are definitely getting encounters now. I kind of want to try something. Well, I can't try it now. Two shadows! They're strong! Let's go. We've got a battle to win. Huh? Yeah, I suppose. Yes, Ken and Shinjiro do have some unique lines together. Here I go! Didn't know I've seen this before, but I love how these things knock down and it looks like they're throwing power. a tantrum. That was a strong enemy. I wasn't expecting it. Shinjiro Senpai, are you okay? You've lost a lot of health. <laughs> okay, lights are off again. <laughs> Safer to run here because there aren't any of the dog. Yeah, that's. While the lights are off, you don't get encounters. Huh. I, I'm, I feel really stupid for never noticing that in all the times I've played this game, but yeah, I never realised that before. But you definitely do get encountered with the lights turned on. That area over there is kind of bugging me. Want to check it out? That's interesting, actually, because normally in horror settings you're expecting to jump out at you while the lights the are off, box. and, well, that is true of the FOEs, but not of the regular encounters. Anyway, and here we get Stun Hammer. It's another one power weapon that has a chance of a status, but in this case it's Paralysis, which I don't really find all that amazing in this game. I, I prefer Agility Bind and Panic. But unfortunately, the lights are on in this room, which hey, means we will you know? get random encounters. So the Hellish Pacifier is not in this area. It's actually beyond the Rattle Spaces. And I kind of spoiled this, but there's actually two of them, so we have to lure Three away two babies attacking. here. Oh, well, that encounter wasn't great. Yeah, I'd probably rather use Medea on you, because she's got a lot of SP. So anyway... I actually uh, redid this recording, I said this before, but it was mainly because I failed this puzzle so badly that it was kind of embarrassing. Looks like the FOE noticed us. But I think this is how I want to do it this time. Firstly, I'm going to lure this baby to this door. Now, I can't oh. actually get past it without waking it anymore. up. But that is exactly what I want. Because I now need to lure it to the other door. got away from that FOE. Okay, it's going back to sleep. I don't want it to be back to sleep. But remember that method that I used to put it back to sleep again immediately after stepping on this creaking tile? Because that will be useful later, but for now I actually want this thing to go to sleep in front of this door. There oh, we go. Over there. There's an FOE. And now I need to dodge around the creaking tiles. And keep that one asleep over there. Three enemies! They're powerful! Hmm. It has a hole even before our fight. I still love that line. Leader, are you alright? Please be sure to watch your health. So, the nasty trap here... Is there's in fact a second rattle space. So in order to get through this hallway, we need to lure two babies. 
That FOE is getting closer. Careful. There's a one-way shortcut here, because it's definitely possible to end up in this hallway with one baby behind you and the other in front of you. But I don't think I want to take that shortcut just yet. Because like I said, I want to lure this thing into falling asleep in front of this door. Okay, so now they're both asleep. Huh. I don't think it's chasing us anymore. But I'm going to wake them both up by stepping on this tile. However, at this point... It doesn't matter, because they won't actually catch me. They're too far away. And you might notice that one of the babies is trying to cut me off, but it doesn't realise there's a wall here. Keep that in mind though, because they will try and cut you off if there's room. I believe... So you can get into this room before accepting Elizabeth's request, but I prefer to do it now, because otherwise you'd have to make two trips past the babies. It looks as though the enemy FOE has given up its pursuit. There's actually a puzzle hint here, though. One, two, three, four. One and two are white on black, and three and four are black on white. Uh, as I already recorded this earlier, I've already written this down. Huh? What? Though that hint, I kind of missed what it meant when I first played this. I only recently found out um, the actual... I actually had to look up how this puzzle really worked. I kind of only half understood it on my first few playthroughs. But that's not oh, what we came right, here it's for. A treasure box. What we came here for is this treasure box. Do you think there's something strange about that wall? Let's look. Now the witch dress is actually the much better female exclusive armor that I said we'd be getting soon. I like giving this to Naoto. Lots of defense and increases SP and magic, which is pretty much perfect for her. Okay then, this is the item that we need though. The Hellish Pacifier. Is is aluminium? I think it is poisonous actually. Oh yeah, it's pronounced aluminium in British and Australian English, um, and it's aluminum in American English. Hmm. So we have that, now we can report that request in, which we should probably do now. I guess we can get a sneak preview of how much of the floor is left. Not that much, but still a tiny bit to go. We should be able to finish the rest of it in this part, but before we do that, let's just get out of here before we get killed by an enemy ambush and lose our progress in this side quest. While we're here, I guess we could heal. Even though that's a little bit of a splurge in money, but... Yeah, I've got a lot of money at this point. There are going to be a couple more requests that unlock towards the end of this floor, but I think I'll handle them all in the part after this, which will be entirely side quests. So this is... Then, um, as I expected. Ah, uh, <laughs> run, run now, run, everyone, run. This will be your. Make sure we sleep in a locked room from now on. For that, we get a Heatwave skill card, which can be kind of nice. Heatwave only affects one role in this game. Not all enemies, like it does in most Persona games, so it's not as useful as I am. And now, so now has access to both instant death spread moves, as if she wasn't strong enough already. I have become stronger once more. Okay, that's definitely useful because it affects an entire row now, but there is an even better version of it we'll be getting much later. <laughs> not bad at all. And you, Narukami, gets a new skill. It seems my level has increased. I think that's, yeah, that's the first of Zen's buff skills that he's learned. This buffs an entire row, so not quite as useful as the Ma Taru skill, like as the Ma buffs, but it's, it can be decent if Zen is the only buffer you have in the party. 
Zen and Ray are extremely versatile party members. In fact, I might actually put them back in the party after this. I don't think I've used them for this entire... Have I not even used them this whole dungeon? I feel like I haven't, actually. Actually, I had to put Akihiko in since he's still level 24. Swimming this around a bit, Akihiko now has Red Rider because he's pretty fast, so that synergizes well with Death Scythe. And Ken now has a much more fitting persona. Actually, no, don't, don't, please don't take that out of context. I mean stat-wise, I mean stat-wise. Anyway, let's save now that we've completed a request. Huh? There's something strange about over there. We've already examined that. Let's move on to the next room, which looks like another dark room, which will be a blessing in disguise. Careful. However, there are more of those jump scare dolls in here, as Reset just said. Yeah, on this floor you get warned when there are rooms that contain the dolls. And these rooms contain, well, you'll see what this is later. For now I'm marking it with a question mark. Um. Thankfully it wasn't a trap or anything. <sighs> But this switch is actually pointless for the moment. Hmm. We have to map out this area before we do anything further with that switch. <laughs> Hi there! We can't actually get through this area with the lights off. You want to make sure you mark the FOEs here though. It's going to be important. Oh, actually I can still go down. But, again, can't go any further. It's kind of a blessing in disguise that, um, we don't have any encounters here yet. I say yet, because we'll be turning the lights on eventually. And there's another switch. Also useless for now. So, this room has four FOEs in it. And the door to the exit is locked. If you wish to proceed, step in the correct order. Yes. I feel like the dialogue here might be different because it's possible to have not discovered that room at this point. Uh, yeah, we found three square-shaped rooms. <laughs> and here we I have a light switch. switch. up ahead. Should we go press it? I find this switch pretty easy to miss. If you miss it, this puzzle is kind of impossible, so you need to remember that that's there. This room, though, is empty of the creepy doll FOEs. And it also has a switch in it. And just mapping out the rest of this one. So, this is where things get kind of interesting. So you can tell that this room here that I'm focusing on now has three FOEs, this one has four of them, and they seem to be arranged in the shape of dice pips. So we know that, uh, I'm gonna have to erase one of the FOEs if I want to put a number, but we know that this room here is, I guess I can do that to mark where I'm pointing, that room there is three. And that room is four. Yeah, if I put a three there, it'll actually cover up one of the FOEs, which is something that I don't want to do. But, but now we need to figure out which of these other rooms is one and which is two. Now, when I first played this game, I actually ended up stumbling upon the correct combination by pure trial and error, because I figured out which rooms were three and four based on the dolls, but not which were one and two. With the lights on, however, we can now fully complete these squares. Also, random encounters of that. I can't believe I didn't notice that before. But you might notice that there are no lights in those rooms. But there are lights here. There's one light in this room. 
and you can probably tell where this is going. Three oh, no. Oh, great. Worst it's possible encounter. Thankfully, Akihiko got away. Let's just fill out the, the tiles here. And in this room, we have a light in either corner. So, this room is number two, and that room is number one. So, that's actually probably what the white on black and black on white distinction actually means. So yeah, one and two are white on black, which represents the lights in the darkness. Three and four are black on white, which represents the number of FOEs on the regular room. So, like I said, in my first playthrough I didn't realise that at all, and I just brute forced uh, one and two by trial and error. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. But anyway, we now know that we have to step on the root on the switches, and we have to do that while the lights are on, otherwise there's no way to go to room number two without um, stepping on switch four. So... Here we go. One. Actually, wait a minute. I think we actually have to leave first to reset the switches. So let's go. One. We're probably going to get into an encounter. As I thought. too soon. Okay, now two. Three. And then four. So now we can get through. There are going to be a lot of puzzles going forward that involve moving through rooms that are arranged in a square like that in order, so remember that for later. Oh no, not again. There's probably a very good reason that that encounter is more common later in the floor. There's something over there. You want to go check it out? Come on. Unfortunately, we're only halfway through. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teddy will not escape getting owned. But this is actually an important conversation to get because it does unlock a side quest. I think this is true. Hmm. I challenge you. I'll leave it in your hands. So it is time for the jewel of the mascots. I wonder if there's going to be a if there's going to be another version of that quest in Q2 that involves Morgana as well. Oh, that was scary. Don't be scared, Ray. I will protect you. Okay, there's the full quote. I cut it off last time we heard that. And yes, I have actually used them uh, in this dungeon before. But speaking of which, I forgot to equip the twin sheets. There we go. Well, I mean, in another game that will give resistance to fear, but fear is curse in this one. And now we have a shortcut to much, much earlier in the floor. Which can only mean one thing. We're almost at the end of this one. There we go. Stairs. stairs. Shall we take them? And map completed. <laughs> Looks like you've got this floor mostly figured out now. And now I have to go all the way back to that uh, chest. But before we do anything else, I actually do want to head downstairs here because that will unlock some new requests from Elizabeth 
and a new thing to do in the Velvet Room, and one that I've been looking forward to a lot, for real this time. But also, it's time for a music and aesthetics change here. From red light to green light. Huh? Did this... It says examination room. This looks like a hospital. I didn't realize this was fully voiced, so I skipped Yukiko's voice clip here. Here it is. Huh? Did the scenery change? Ooh, a hospital? Yosuke, where are the nurses? The pretty nurses! Hey, that's right. You gotta have nurses in a hospital. I mean, shut up! <laughs> Yet more amazing Yuri Lowe Val performances. Ray, are you alright? If I keep my eyes closed, I can't see anything, so I'll be okay. Ray, you'll get separated if you do that. Oh, I don't want to be left behind! Can everyone hear me? It's hard to communicate here, and it's dark too, so make sure you don't get separated. Oh great, our navigator's starting to cut out. That can't be a good sign. Oh, even a teen idol's voice sounds creepy laced with static like that. Huh? Risei chan seriously a real idol? You haven't realized yet? She was on TV a lot. Do they not broadcast those shows in the city? Oh, I remember this conversation now. Hmm, now that you mention it, I feel like I have seen her before somewhere. Risei. Risei Kujikawa. I heard that name from a club owner friend of mine. Something about a secret show they held. Seriously? You mean Club Escapade at the Polonia Mall? A show at the Polonia Mall? I did one there, but that was over two years ago. Yeah, I've alluded to this before. That was actually scheduled the um, the night that the power outage hit because of the Hermit Full Moon Shadow. Two years ago? Hold on a moment. Let me just confirm something. What year is it right now? 2009. Huh? It's 2011! Both those dates were actually in the future when their respective games came out. P3, I think, came out in 2006, and P4 in, I think, 2008 or 2009. What? It's 2009! Come on, a two-year difference is a bit much for a mistake. Huh. Could it be that our worlds are from different times? Yamagishi, run this by the people in the Velvet Room. Right! So it's revealed. We weren't hiding it, though. Said Elizabeth. <laughs> of course she'd say something like that. They could have told us before. Margaret says, I believe I told you that we have come from a different place in time than you. Oh, and Elizabeth says, you are heroes who have been guided together. Again, of course she'd say that. Huh. Anyway, we're from two years apart, right? Also, Theo didn't make a comment probably because they wouldn't let him, and Marie didn't make a comment because she's probably too busy writing a poem about time travel. Hmm, it's no big deal for them, but... Your velvet room seems pretty to uh, fun. <laughs> you almost said tough just now, didn't you? Wait, that means we're older than you guys. <laughs> yes! I always wanted girls to call me Junpei Senpai. Huh? Why would we do that? Huh? Well, we're still both second years. I don't think we need to worry about stuff like that. Okay, but now Cakes is a first year, right? You may be older than me, but you're not my senpai. Oh, I see. Junpei owned count one, I guess? Senpai. <laughs> don't. You don't have to say that. It's creepy. I love you. He's amazing. What? If Persona users from two years later don't know about the Dark Hour... This is a good point, though. Could it mean we'll be victorious in our battle to eliminate it? Oh, don't think too hard about it. If we stop being serious about this, it'll bite us in the ass. You're right. But I feel as if I've seen hope. A future as bright as they are. Yeah. Now then, let's go. <laughs> Oops, she froze up. Iori, you take the lead. You're their senpai, no? What? This is tyranny! And back to this again. So, we'll be exploring this place further, uh, 
a little bit later on, because for now we have quite a few things that just unlocked, so let's head back right after I go and get that chest, that 100% floor completion chest. By the way, I'm pretty sure that there says Operation in Progress. Okay, what do we get for completing this floor? Manila Rope. Another key item, which means another thing that we need to pay Theodore for, it looks like. And yes, I came with several Goho M's prepped in advance, just in case I screw up that puzzle. We also have new stroll conversations. But, uh, I think we'll do some of those later. For now, though, let's actually turn in that rope. And we can skip this because, you know, well, sorry Theodore for not giving you any respect, but we've already seen this. So with that we can buy Bracer of Might. While I'm here, I might as well unload my items. Not that I actually have many items. Bracer of Might. Auto revives with 1 HP, usable once. It's very expensive, but that can be useful. Uh, in a lot of the games in the series, this item is exclusive to your main character, but not so much here. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're going to save, and next time we'll actually not head further in the Evil Spirit Club. We'll instead be doing a couple of side quests that just unlocked. So, see you then. I think we got away from that FOE. I think I'm stuck. Yeah, I knew I'd mess this up at least once. And now I trap myself. This is why I brought extra Goho M's. I actually can see this one of the harder FOE puzzles in the game, so I'm not surprised I'm failing it a few times. It is thankfully entirely optional. In fact, at this point, I think I'm well on track to getting trapped again. I may have screwed this up again, which is frustrating because I feel like I almost had it. Damn, there's an FOE over there. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get trapped again if I keep this up. I have to reset it again. That FOE must have given up. Sigh. An FOE! Escape immediately! This isn't good. Especially not now. <laughs> At my limits. <laughs> An FOE's joined the battle. Enemy forces have increased. It's here. <laughs> now Tokun is unconscious. I brought multiple of these for a reason. 